And I think, you know, one of the biggest problems is that often in offices, it is men who control temperatures. You know, that's just something I found anecdotally. Um, and because majority of the men in offices seem to be absolutely fine with the temperatures, you know, women kind of just sit there on the corner feeling absolutely frozen. And, you know, often, like, actually, nothing's being done to help them. Help them. Help them. You don't what want the fuck are you talking about? Over the years, the word feminist has gotten a bad name. Kind of like the term red pill and manosphere. On one hand, the feminist movement started by women just simply wanting the right to vote and equality. But according to my research, I googled it. You stupid. Even in the beginning, some feminists claimed that women were morally superior to men. And so their presence in the civic sphere would improve public behavior and the political process. In other words, some feminists believe women were more civilized than men and women in power would make the world a more civilized place. Honestly, I don't know how to feel about that. So I think I'll just put the intro right here. Rim low on my fitted, uh, dreams has always been vivid. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to go get it, catch me right around and I'm ignorant, I'm just rolling. Buy my t-shirt, little bitch. Uh, so tell him get on my level, ho. I'm burning up, see I'm hotter than where the devil go. It ain't enough till I'm burning down. What's up, man? I was recently chatting with a guy about the fact that women are increasingly hesitant to call themselves feminist, and he asked the question, should a man even consider dating a woman who considers herself a feminist? And I think it was a rhetorical question, but I'm going to answer it anyway, because even though I think feminism has become a full-blown hate movement, at least feminism proper, the kind that you find on college campuses, my answer is not an automatic no, because I'm more concerned with how people conduct themselves in life than the label that they attach to themselves. I couldn't agree more. There are so many different forms of feminism. Now, this applies to most groups. You see, Oftentimes, the extreme forms of a group gets the most attention, which is why I don't attach myself to any of the manosphere, red pill, or political groups. But you're not here for that, so let's take a second to discuss what feminism is and isn't, so you can make the right decision on who you allow in your life. A charming little editorial that showed up earlier this summer in the Washington Post called Why Can't We Hate Men? It was written by a gender studies professor out of Boston named Susanna Denudo Walters, and she makes the case that masculinity is based on oppression and violence and that it's shaped by racism, and therefore it's not only understandable, it's probably logical and desirable to hate men. I want to read you her closing argument because even though it's a little long, it's instructive for this conversation. So men, if you really are hashtag with us and would like us to not hate you for all the millennia of woe you have produced and benefited from, start with this. Lean out so we can actually just stand up without being beaten down. Pledge to vote for feminist women only. Don't run for office. Don't be in charge of anything. Step away from the power. We got this. And please know that your crocodile tears won't be wiped away by us anymore. We have the right to hate you. You have done us wrong. Hashtag because patriarchy. Why articulate a coherent argument when you can simply emote with a hashtag? So basically what this professor was saying is women have been oppressed and we're way past wanting equality. No, they want power and you men need to step aside and give it to them. Honestly, I don't think it's a ton of women that think like this. I believe most women are equity feminists. And then you have gender feminists that I refer to as toxic feminists, like this professor. On one end of the spectrum are equity feminists who want equality between men and women, including equal opportunity and equal responsibility. And at the other end are the gender feminists. These are the female supremacists. They have no interest in equality. For them, it's about making men pay. And I suppose there are women on all points between those extremes. So when I say don't date a feminist, I'm referring to the gender feminist that I call toxic. And now that that's cleared up, back to this toxic professor. So let's follow the logic here. Susanna Walters is saying that because Group A has a historical grievance against Group B, they are fully justified not only in hating Group B, but in relegating the current members of that group to the lower levels of society. 
This is a repugnant way of thinking that has been used to justify some of the worst behavior in history. And I think that's why Susanna Walters has gotten such a backlash against this piece, including legal complaints against her department for creating a hostile environment. Reasonable people find this repellent. And among the reactions that I saw that I found kind of interesting were a lot of people on social media who were saying that Susanna Walters is clearly not a real feminist because real feminism is about equality. It's not about hatred. Well, allow me to retort. As someone who has spent far too much time on college campuses, I can assure you that Susanna Walters' brand of feminism, where she brings up all the old debunked tropes about the wage gap and the rape culture, and she resurrects complaints from the 1800s, it's all just run-of-the-mill feminist canon that you can find on any college campus across the country. Now, I went to a HBCU, and I visited a ton of HBCUs. I just don't think we talked about stuff like this. We were just trying to party and pass our classes. Maybe this occurs at PWIs, predominantly white institutes, but the only time it got serious was when it was time to vote for the first black president and when we did that girls versus guys water fight. What a time to be alive. I happen to own what appears to be one of the most commonly used gender studies textbooks. It's called Women's Voices Feminist Visions. I picked this one up off eBay for about $5, and I think I overpaid. And how to describe this book? It's not real heavy on hard data. It's essentially a longer version of Susanna Walters' opinion piece. It's a collection of about 100 different essays, most of them outdated and freely available on the internet. Uh, it's interspersed with some commentary and guidance from the authors and, of course, a little bit of feminist poetry that'll make you want to slit your wrist. She stands before the abortion clinic, confounded by the lack of choices. In the welfare line, reduced to the pity of handouts. Ordained in the... <coughs> this textbook goes into great emotional detail about how women are oppressed in marriage and in religion and medicine, and biology, and family, and the arts, and technology, and college. College, of all places, the one area in society where women are clearly outperforming men by a huge margin, this book still makes the case that women are systematically oppressed there. So I'm not going to use this whole video. I'll leave the link in the description. But if you're dealing with a woman that feels oppressed by men in today's society, you got to let her go because we have women excelling at all levels in this country. So a woman can do anything she puts her mind to as long as she's willing to work hard for it. Life is not a competition of men versus women. And even though men built the system, women still have advantages in it. And in the interest of not sounding like Kevin Samuels, I'll only list a few, like the child custody laws, or women getting less time in jail for the same crimes, and women on average having more options in dating than men. Honestly, I didn't think toxic feminism was a thing until I got on TikTok. You should see all the young ladies talking about how men ain't shit, they're oppressing us, and all men are dogs. And I'm like, young lady, you're not even old enough to get your working papers, so how are you oppressed when you're not even old enough to get a job? The toxic side of feminism will have these young ladies believing that nothing is their fault. Sure, she shows her butthole on the internet for $5 a month on OnlyFans, but you shouldn't judge her. But sweetheart, we do. The toxic side of feminism teaches that a woman can't be accountable for her efforts or her outcomes because the system is rigged in men's favor. Toxic feminism teaches women that violence, oppression, and racism comes from masculinity. The truth is, men and women both have masculine and feminine traits. Obviously, if you're a male, you probably have more masculine traits than a woman, and vice versa. But women can be competitive, goal-orientated, and ambitious. And men can be shy, compassionate, and empathetic. So even if one were to argue that violence, oppression, and racism was a masculine trait, these are traits that women can possess as well. You see, society says a man should never hit a woman. I agree with that. But in reverse, we see women smacking the shit out of men all the time. So if violence is a masculine trait, there's a lot of Karens out here with it. But anyways, here's some of what toxic feminists consider toxic masculine traits. Mental and physical toughness. This one is funny to me because the most successful people in the world are mentally tough. 
they possess the discipline to maintain focus on a task. And that tends to come in handy when you're trying to invent new things, like, you know, the cell phone that these toxic feminists complain on. And some of the most dangerous jobs require you to be physically tough, like being a firefighter. So I can debate all of these traits, but that's not what we're here for. Once again, I haven't seen too many women in real life that are toxic feminists, but I have seen it on the internet, which means I probably should stay off the internet. Damn right. You see, I'm not saying don't date a woman that considers themselves a feminist, but if they do call themselves a feminist, you have to find out what kind of feminist they consider themselves to be. Because I believe most men want equality. We all have women we love and want them to be treated fairly. But the I hate men wave, honestly, is just weird. Just like the guys who hate women. Honestly, it's kinda weird. And if you meet people like this, do not entertain them. So, on to the important parts, like how you spot a toxic feminist. It's simple. Oftentimes they use weird old words and they call everything misogynistic. Here are some of Doc Smith's words. I haven't heard all of them said before, but the ones that stick out to me are fat shaming. Fellas, that only applies to women. You see, you can't make fun of Lizzo. That's fat shaming. But we can make fun of DJ Khaled being fat all day. The next word, body shaming. Similar to fat shaming, but body shaming is when a skinny person calls a fat woman fat. But if a fat woman calls a skinny person skinny, it's not body shaming. Amazing. I know. I don't get it either. But when you hear women use these words, don't argue with them. Trust me, they're just going to say you're part of the problem. Another way you can spot a toxic feminist is if she places emotions over facts. We all do this sometimes, but feminists take it to a whole nother level. Like the wage gap. I've done a video on that where we get into the career choices, hours worked, and the fact that if women were paid less, businesses who love money would just hire females. But those ladies don't wanna hear that. You see, the reason why this victim mindset becomes a problem in a relationship is when you start to put feelings over reality. An example of that is when you're trying to make financial decisions, like say deciding where you want to live. Your lady may feel like she deserves to live in an upscale area even though she knows your budget can't afford it, but that area will make her feel better. So now you have to find a way to make it work. So instead of you saving money for retirement, you're struggling and you're never home. So she's probably fucking the mailman now. Because remember, it's your fault you're never home. Even though you're never home because you have to work to afford the upscale lifestyle. Another reason why you should never date a toxic feminist is because if she sees men as her oppressor, eventually, especially after the honeymoon phase, she's going to start to see you as her oppressor. Maybe she wants to wear that dress that shows off too much, or she wants to stay out late. Don't oppress her with your standards, bro. Let her live freely. Another reason you don't want to date a toxic feminist is because as a man, when you're with a woman, you naturally want to protect her. So her problems become your problems. I don't care if my lady's in the room. If you disrespect her, you're going to have to deal with me. I look like I give a fuck. So you're wondering how men become toxic feminists. Well, some of them are just beta male and others date toxic feminists and they start to see the world the same way these ladies do. You see. They hear how men are oppressing females. And side note, you can't call women females anymore. It's offensive. Amazing. No, seriously, it's offensive. But that's how you end up in public, wearing a t-shirt that says, the future is female. When in reality, the future should be family, men and women working together. So remember, you decide who you spend your time with. So if you're hanging with a guy who's saying all these red pill lies, or you're dating a toxic feminist, all I'm saying is change your circle, bro. I'm out.